Lee Lock Stenson, Latin American Studies and Collections. And it's a great pleasure, a wonderful, <coughs> enormous pleasure to welcome you here to the, the opening of the, of the conference on International Women's Day. International Women's Day and Feminism in Contemporary Mexico, Por una Vida Libre de Violencia para las Mujeres, for a life free of violence for women. Es una conferencia bilingüe, inclusive yo escribí algunas palabras en español y ahora pienso que los voy a dar en, en más que todo en inglés, pero tal vez un poquito de español. Entonces los traductores van de un lado a otro. Um, especially given the importance of, of this day uh, and, in, and the, the profound importance of the, of the topic that we're uh, going to be addressing, I, I want to start by asking us all to engage in a moment of silence. We were moved uh, recently, uh, just last Thursday, uh, when the, as the LASA conference last week, uh, Utopia and Realities opened, uh, moved and indignant at the news of the assassination of Berta Cáceres, an activist indigenous Lenka woman from Honduras who had been a, a um, internationally recognized leader of struggles for indigenous rights, struggles against the economic model and being implemented in Honduras and throughout Central America and Latin America that has produced damaging and, and really life undermining conditions for people that in the communities where uh, she works and lives, she worked and lived. And Berta is one of thousands who have lost their lives uh, in sacrifice for um, struggles such as those that she engaged in, struggles against uh, gender violence, against inequality and oppression. So a moment of silence, please, to remember those who, who gave their lives and whose sacrifice produces more commitment in the rest of us to continue on. This, is, this conference, uh, beginning with our Ponencia Magistral, which will start in just a moment, and with panels uh, all afternoon, uh, is dedicated to a transnational dialogue with uh, academics from Mexico and Texas and other places in the world on the topic of gender violence. But it's much more than a conference. As I think about it this morning, I think it, it, it's something between an academic event and a social movement. It's, it's to take another step forward in the creation of a cátedra. The cátedra Marcelo, Marcelo Lagarde y de los Rios. This cátedra has the objective of putting in motion a series of activities, collaborative activities, among seven units between Guatemala, Mexico, and seven universities and foundations, one foundation, between Guatemala, Mexico, and Texas, all of whom are committed to working in a continuous fashion on, on the issues, both academic and activist, uh, to which our ponente magistral has devoted her her long and illustrious uh, uh, professional career. So it really is is a uh, the beginning of a, of a process that will live on much beyond um, the activities that we're carrying out today. It's also, <clears throat> I think, in this sense, uh, a conference that's devoted to the principle that 
excellent academic work <coughs> and, and committed political engagement on issues that concern us all, not only are, are not in contradiction with one another, which is something, a message we often are told um, by <coughs> administrators, by some academics, by some gatekeepers, not only is it not a contradiction to be working academically on, on excellent research and being engaged politically in society, but one actually deeply enriches the other. That's the principle underlying this conference. And so it's very important for this particular issue, and, and I can say it um, from the perspective of, of Lilas Benson, it's very important for all the intellectual agenda that, that we carry out. So I want to just take a moment to uh, remember there's many roads that have led to, to, to today. And I haven't, I haven't traveled on all of them. Uh, I've traveled on very few of them. But I've seen a bit of the, of the long-term work that's led to uh, the creation of this Katada. I just want to remember a few. Algunos um, hitos. <clears throat> eight years ago, we signed a, a, a convenio with, with CIESAS as UT and CSS. CSS is Centro de Investigaciones y Estudios Superiores de la Antropología Social. It has seven sedes across Mexico. And at that convenio signing, we had a series of, of, um, of, of, of collaborations. And one of them was a collaboration between Patti Ravelo and Gloria Gonzalez on the question of, of uh, gender violence. And that, and that represented an important step in carrying on that work, but also built on previous work that had been carried out by Pati Ravelo y Héctor Domínguez Cavala that for the last, what, two decades, uh, focused on feminicide. And so we had a long history of work uh, on, on gender violence that the CSS Convenio was one contribution to strengthening. <coughs> Hector and Gloria then teamed up to uh, and, was, and, 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 and carried out um, activities under the, the aegis of what was called the uh, Faculty Research Initiative, which is a, which is a program of LILAS to, to encourage uh, collaboration, transnational collaboration on topics of importance to the Institute. And they carried out a whole series of activities, and the culmination was a diplomado. Uh, on, on violencia de género, in collaboration with Margarita Dalton, who's here, who at that time was director of CSS Oaxaca, and also in collaboration with Women and Gender Studies here at UT, and Sue Heinzelman and I attended the con conclusion of that, of that wonderful six-week course, which brought, uh, I think, six or eight instructors from, uh, professors from from different places, experts in gender violence, and provided an incredibly deep and transformative agenda of of learning for activists and graduate students who were interested in the topic. And, and also, Sue Heisman caught the Oaxaca bug and has been going back, I think, once every three months since. <laughs> <coughs> right around that time, we had Marcel Lagarde here as the Austin, as the, the, the honored speaker in the Austin Contemporary Lectures on, uh, Austin, Austin Lecture on Contemporary Mexico. And that was another important piece in, in this puzzle. And soon after that, out of, out of a whole series of activities that I don't really even know uh, the details enough to recount, a proposal for this cathedra emerged. Um, and, and, and I think I'm in my very final months of director, as director of Lewis Benson, and one of the things that I worry about as I leave is institutionalization. How can exciting programs that you work on when you're when you're in an institution, how can you make sure they carry on afterwards? And, and in addition to just the intrinsic excitement of this topic, I'm so um, energized by this cognitive because it's, it's a program that will carry on. It will have institutional solidity beyond the, the, the involvement of, of each of the people that are involved right now. And that's a very, very exciting achievement. Um, <clears throat> So just two final hitos. We had a, a, a visit to, uh, to, to Mexico uh, uh, of the president and all kinds of high administrators of UT. And we, had a, we, visited, uh, we visited the SAGE and had a, 
took about a two or three hour conversation on this with uh, Luis Orieta, the director of the of the Lilas Nexus Center, um, and also Dean Randy Deal, my boss, who had who really who had a full plate of of of, of uh, engagement and education on the issue. He came back very, very impressed. And the president of our university named the Catedra Marcelo de Lagarde de los Rios as one of the priority activities that emerged from that presidential delegation, which we were very pleased about and very excited about. Um, <clears throat> and then, finally, we've, uh, we have uh, as, a, as an expression of that of that presidential statement, we made sure that to to, um, to, to keep him good to his word, uh, his his um, second uh, uh, the provost uh, Judith Langlois will be here a little bit later this morning to to announce the the university's commitment to this conference. So we're we're really thrilled that it's uh, that, that it's come together. We're we're. I want to uh, particularly uh, thank those that have done so much work, Gloria, Hector, Sue, many others, uh, Luis, and all those that have come from, uh, from, from Mexico that have been working on this, um, on this program here. It's um, a, a crucial uh, achievement because of, what it, of, the, of the program that it carries forth and also for the prospect of having um, this the ética y política feminista um, not only be the basis for the activities of the cátedra, but also be the basis for, in an expanding sense, many, many of the other activities that we carry out in this university, and particularly in this very uh, deep and growing and, and, and prospering collaboration between Lilas Benson and Women and Gender Studies. So in, in that spirit, I want to welcome Hector Ripati, que acaban de llegar. Bienvenidos. Hola. Yo ya les presenté como la, la, la pareja académica del, del siglo, así que no. <laughs> este, um, so, so um, with those words, I'd like to I'd like to um, cede the podium to my <coughs> colleague, and dear friend Gloria González López, who's been one of the prime movers of this of this wonderful effort. Gloria. Lilas Benson Latin American Studies and Collections, and it's a great pleasure, a wonderful, <coughs> enormous pleasure to welcome you here to the, the opening of the, of the conference on International Women's Day, International Women's Day and Feminism in Contemporary Mexico, Por una Vida Libre de Violencia para las Mujeres, for a Life Free of Violence for Women. Es una conferencia bilingüe, inclusive yo escribí algunas palabras en español y ahora pienso que los voy a dar en, en más que todo en inglés, pero tal vez un poquito de español, entonces los traductores van de un lado a otro. Um, especially given the importance of, of this day uh, and, in, and the, the profound importance of the, of the topic that we're uh, going to be addressing. I, I want to start by asking us all to engage in a moment of silence. We were moved uh, recently, uh, just last Thursday, uh, when the, as the LASA conference last week, uh, Utopia and Realities opened, uh, moved and indignant at the news of the assassination of Berta Cáceres, an activist, indigenous Lenca woman from Honduras who had been a, a um, internationally recognized leader of struggles for indigenous rights, struggles against the economic model and being implemented in Honduras and throughout Central America, Latin America that has produced damaging and, and really life-undermining conditions for people that 
in the communities where uh, she works and lives. She worked and lives. And Babta is one of thousands who have lost their lives uh, in sacrifice for um, struggles such as those that she engaged in, struggles against uh, gender violence, against inequality and oppression. So a moment of silence, please, to remember those who, who gave their lives and whose sacrifice produces more commitment in the rest of us to continue on. This, is, this conference, uh, beginning with our Ponencia Magistral, which will start in just a moment, and with panels uh, all afternoon, uh, is dedicated to a transnational dialogue with uh, academics from Mexico and Texas and other places in the world on the topic of gender violence. But it's much more than a conference. As I think about it this morning, I think it's, it, it's something between an academic event and a social movement. It's, it's to take another step forward in the creation of a cátedra. The cátedra Marcelo, Marcelo Lagarde y de los Rios. This cátedra has the objective of putting in motion a series of activities, collaborative activities, among seven units between Guatemala, Mexico, and seven universities and foundations, one foundation, between Guatemala, Mexico, and Texas, all of whom are committed to working in a continuous fashion on, on the issues, both academic and activist, uh, to which our ponente magistral has devoted her her long and illustrious uh, uh, professional career. So it really is is a uh, the beginning of a, of a process that will live on much beyond um, the activities that we're carrying out today. It's also, <clears throat> I think, in this sense, uh, a conference that's devoted to the principle that excellent academic work <coughs> And, and committed political engagement on issues that concern us all, not only are, are not in contradiction with one another, which is something, a message we often are told um, by <coughs> administrators, by some academics, by some gatekeepers, not only is it not a contradiction to be working academically on, on excellent research and being engaged politically in society, but one actually deeply enriches the other. That's the principle underlying this conference. And so it's very important for this particular issue, and, and I can say it, um, from the perspective of, of Lilas Benson, it's very important for all the intellectual agenda that, that we carry out. So I want to just take a moment to uh, remember there's many roads that have led to, to, to today. And I haven't, I haven't traveled on all of them. Uh, I've traveled on very few of them. But I've seen a bit of the, of the long-term work that's led to uh, the creation of this cátedra. I just want to remember a few, algunos hitos. Um, <clears throat> eight years ago, we signed a, a, a convenio with, with CIESAS, as UT and CIESAS. CIESAS is Centro de Investigaciones y Estudios Superiores de la Antropología Social has seven sedes across Mexico. And at that convenio signing, we had a series of, of, um, of, of, of collaborations. And one of them was a collaboration between Pati Ravelo and Gloria Gonzalez on the question of, of uh, gender violence. And that, and that represented an important step in carrying on that work, but also built on previous work that had been carried out by Pati Ravelo y Héctor Domínguez Cavalla for the last 
what, two decades, uh, focused on femicide. And so we had a long history of work uh, on, on gender violence that the CSS Convenia was one contribution to strengthening. <clears throat> Hector and Gloria then teamed up to uh, and, was, and, 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 and carried out um, activities under the, the aegis of what was called the uh, Faculty Research Initiative, which is a, which is a program of LELOS to, to encourage uh, collaboration, transnational collaborations on topics of importance to the Institute. And they carried out a whole series of activities, and the culmination was a Diplomado uh, on, on Violencia de Genero, in collaboration with Margarita Dalton, who's here, who at that time was director of CSS Oaxaca, and also in collaboration with Women and Gender Studies here at UT, and Sue Heinzelman and I attended the con conclusion of that, of that wonderful six-week course which brought, uh, I think, six or eight instructors from uh, professors from, from different places, experts in gender violence, and provided an incredibly deep and transformative agenda of, of learning for activists and graduate students who were interested in the topic. And, and also, Sue Hanselman caught the Oaxaca bug and has been going back, I think, once every three months since. <laughs> Right around that time, we had Marcel Lagarde here as the Austin as the, the, the honored speaker in the Austin Contemporary Lectures on uh, Austin, Austin Lecture on Contemporary Mexico, and that was another important piece in, in this puzzle. And soon after that, out of out of a whole series of activities that I don't really even know uh, the details enough to recount, a proposal for this cathedra emerged, um, and 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 I think. I'm in my very final months of director, as director of Lewis Benson, and one of the things that I worry about as I leave is institutionalization. How can exciting programs that you work on when you're, when you're in an institution, how can you make sure they carry on afterwards? And, and in addition to just the intrinsic excitement of this topic, I'm so um, energized by this content because it's, it's a program that will carry on. It will have institutional solidity beyond the, the, the involvement of, of each of the people that are involved right now. And that's a very, very exciting achievement. Um, <clears throat> so just two final ethos. We had a, a, a visit to, uh, to, to Mexico uh, uh, of the president and all kinds of high administrators of UT. And we, had a, we, visited, uh, we visited the SAGE and had a, think about a two or three hour conversation on this with uh, Luis Orieta, the director of the, of the Lilas Mexico Center, um, and also Dean Randy Deal, my boss, who had, who really, who had a full plate of, 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 of uh, engagement and education on the issue. He came back very, very impressed. And the president of our university named the Catedra Marcelo de Lagarde de los Rios as one of the priority activities that emerged from that presidential delegation, which we were very pleased about and very excited about. Um, <clears throat> and then, finally, we've uh, we have uh, as, a, as an expression of that of that presidential statement, we made sure that, that to, um, to to keep him good to his word, uh, his his um, second uh, uh, the provost. Uh, Judith Langlois will be here a little bit later this morning to, to announce the, the university's commitment to this competition. So we're, we're really thrilled that it's, uh, that, that it's come together. We're, we're, I want to uh, particularly uh, thank those that have done so much work, Gloria, Hector, Sue, many others, or Luis, and all those that have come from, uh, from, from Mexico that have been working on this um, on this program here, it's um, a a crucial uh, achievement because of what it of the of the program that it carries forth, and also for the prospect of having um, this the ética y política feminista um, not only be the basis for the activities of the cátedra but also be the basis for, in an expanding sense, many, many of the other activities 
that we carry out in this university and particularly in this very uh, deep and growing and, and, and prospering collaboration between Lilas Benson and Women and Gender Studies. So in, in that spirit, I want to welcome Hector Ipati, que estamos en Bienvenidos. Ay, qué pena. Bueno, hola. Yo ya les presenté como la, la, la pareja académica del, del siglo, así que no. Este, um, so, so um, with those words, I'd like to I'd like to um, cede the podium to my colleague, and dear friend Gloria González López, who's been one of the prime movers of this of this wonderful effort. Gloria. Uh, no, what I want to say is that Lila's. Uh, has been um, incredibly patriarchal, uh, historically, has been a patriarchal unit uh, here at UT, and Charlie made a difference. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. For <laughs> thank you, Charlie. Um, so thank you for being so receptive. Every time we came to Charlie, Charlie, we need a feminist professor here, Charlie. We need more, you know, uh, awareness on gender inequality, Charlie. We need to bring the first woman to the Austin lecture, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. And always, always, always. He was always receptive. So thank you, Charlie. Thank you for being um, the first uh, uh, feminist, Lila's leader. So we owe you a plaque. <laughs> Thank you. So, muchas gracias a, a, a todas, todos por estar aquí uh, con nosotras el, el día de hoy. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is just give the, uh, the introduction. I am going to uh, have the honor to introduce uh, Dr. Marcela Maria, Marcela Lagarde de los Rios. And I'm going to do it in, in both in uh, English and Spanish. So, I am going to, uh, to combine. So Dr. Marcela Lagarde de los Rios uh, was born in Mexico City, as, and she's an anthropologist who has succeeded in academia and politics. She's a senior, well-accomplished scholar, and one of the most influential feminist voices in Latin America and the Spanish-speaking world. She's a professor at the Universi Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, where she has been working for more than 35 years at the Graduate School in Anthropology and Sociology. Dr. Lagarde has been able to accomplish the impossible. She has succeeded in academia and also in politics. Originally, she was involved in the Partido Comunista, and then she became a member of the PRD and a House representative from 2003 to 2006. And uh, uh, during the term that she worked actively as a House representative, she promoted uh, women's rights, and she was especially concerned with regard to issues involving violence. Dr. Lagarde established the Comisión Especial de Feminicidio in Congress to investigate the countless murders of women in Ciudad Juárez and led the Investigación Diagnóstica sobre Violencia Feminicida en la República, which exposed what it is now known as feminicidio. And also, uh, she has been working on the, some form of uh, demystification of Ciudad Juárez as the place where, the, the only place where women are killed in, in Mexico. She promoted the crime of feminicidio and the Federal Penal Code, as well as the Ley General de Acceso de las Mujeres a una Libre de Violencia, a law that became effective on February 2, 2007. Uh, ella es presidenta de la Red de Investigadoras por la Vida y la Libertad de las Mujeres, AC, coordinadora del proyecto de violencia contra las mujeres y políticas de gobierno en la construcción de los derechos humanos de las mujeres, auspiciada por UNIFEM, y luego en ONU Mujeres, es profesora de diplomados en estudios feministas en el CEICH y también en la Fundación Guatemala y es asesora del posgrado de estudios de género igualmente en la Fundación Guatemala y en el CEICH. Es coordinadora de los talleres Cassandra donde ha transformado, ha ayudado a transformar las vidas de muchas mujeres y es colaboradora en muchísimos grupos, organizaciones civiles, redes feministas, de centros, institutos, secretarías de la mujer, de la igualdad, de equidad, de género y de derechos humanos de las mujeres, de sindicatos, partidos políticos, gobiernos de México, América Latina y España, así como de ONU Mujeres y otros organismos de la ONU y la cooperación internacional uh, forma parte también del Comité Civil de Expertas de ONU Mujeres 
que es consejera y asesora de consejos editoriales eh, en varios eh, eh, espacios donde hay producción eh, académica intelectual. Ha sido integrante de la Academia Mexicana de Derechos Humanos, la Red Sin Fronteras por la Vida y Libertad de las Mujeres, eh, Consejo de Asesoras de la Observatoria de Género y Erradicación de la Violencia contra las Mujeres en el Estado de Veracruz, Consejo de, en el Consejo de Espacio de Mujeres para una Vida uh, Digna, Libre de Violencias en México, eh, también ha sido asesora en la ONU eh, y ha trabajado más en algunos otros espacios, incluyendo a Argentina y otros, uh, otros países uh, de habla hispana. Tiene más de 100... Uh, so she has more than 100 publications. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> Including books, articles on gender, feminism, democracy, human rights, and violence against women. Her doctoral dissertation has become a highly influential uh, book, Los Cautiverios de las Mujeres, Madres Posas, Monjas Putas, Presas y Locas, uh, which was published in the early 19, 1990s, and it has become one of the most influential publications in feminist studies in the Spanish-speaking world. Uh, she's a mom, she's a, a mother, she has, tiene una hija uh, muy linda, que también está muy involucrada en causas uh, feministas, eh, eh, Valeria, y tiene un nieto que en edad escolar, que ya es todo un personaje. <laughs> eh, y eh, yo te quería decir que bueno, te damos la, sí, que, eh, te damos la más uh, cariñosa, afectuosa, eh, bienvenida aquí a Austin. Y es, es un honor llevarte en el corazón y en el pensamiento. Muchas gracias. Tú no necesitas micrófono. Oh, no, pero sí necesitas, yo creo. Para la Sí, 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 sí. Entonces, esa fue la presentación. So, that was my introduction. So, ya pasas, ya, tonta, ya te toca. Te... Oh. No, so she's uh, uh, going to uh, share her uh, knowledge and wisdom uh, for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Sí, me lo pongo. Sí, claro. No te quieres poner tú, enseñarnos tu bolsita. Sí, claro. ¿Quieres? Sí. Quiere que modele antes de dar la conferencia. Es que trae una blusa muy bonita. No. Se llama Huipil. Okay. Aquí hay compañeros de okay. Oaxaca. Sí. Sí, es una... De que les voy a hablar al rato. Es como tener los ojos bonitos y traer antes de sol todo el día. Sí, ¿verdad? Pero era la sorpresa. No sé dónde me Sí, yo creo que sí. ¿Aquí voy a hablar yo? Sí, sí, tienes todo el frente donde sea. ¿Quién va a venir? Ese para el ratito, ah, cuando tengamos los planes. Es una sorpresa. Es una sorpresa. Pues muy bien. Eh, ¿Se me oye? ¿Sí? ¿Allá atrás? ¿Me escuchan? ¿Bien? ¿No está bien puesto? ¿Me puedes ayudar? Bueno, atrás te puede ayudar. Por favor. ¿Ya lo prendiste? ¿Sí? ¿Ya se oye? Sí. Bueno, eh, debería agradecer eh, tantas magníficas eh, y bellas palabras. Eh, de, mi, de mis amigas y de mi amigo Charlie que hemos eh, sintonizado eh, enormemente con, con nuestra visión de las cosas y en este nuevo proyecto de la cátedra eh, que lleva mi nombre y que agradezco mucho pero quiero decir que no es una cátedra para ensalzar a una persona es una cátedra para reunirnos eh, personas que compartimos en la vida eh, una causa muy importante, que es la causa reivindicativa de los derechos humanos de las mujeres. Ese es el punto y, bueno, las personas 
que en esos hitos y caminos nos hemos encontrado. Bueno, quiero decir que son mis colegas, mis colegas eh, entrañables y también algunas de ellas han sido mis estudiantes de, de licenciatura, de maestría, de doctorado, de postdoctorado y de todo lo que han hecho y nos hemos seguido eh, encontrando en la vida. Realmente este proyecto que inicia también es el producto de años y años de esfuerzos eh, por eh, participar en momentos cumbres, momentos difíciles en México eh, en torno a la construcción de estos derechos. Hemos participado cada quien desde su lugar, desde su estado de la república donde ha vivido, desde su universidad o grupo, hemos participado en movimientos que han ido eh, poco a poco consiguiendo derechos para las mujeres. Entre otras, a ver, mujeres mexicanas alcen la mano. Fíjense cuántas. Podríamos formar ya un grupo, ¿no? Pues estamos haciendo eso. Estamos formando una cátedra entre unas mujeres de una parte del mundo y otras mujeres y hombres también de otra parte del mundo. Eh, ese es el sentido de esta cátedra. Y, bueno, reconocer eh, que estoy muy contenta de que hayan venido, que hayan podido venir, queridas compañeras, amigas. Estoy mirando a Margarita Dalton, que para mí fue una maravillosa sorpresa que estuviera aquí, a mi compañera eh, Gaby Ruiz de Aguascalientes, a Susi, bueno, podría decir a todas y cada una y cada uno y, y decirles que estoy verdaderamente conmovida y muy feliz de ser de nuevo pretexto para la reunión de voluntades y de, y de, una, de, de contribuir a mejorar las condiciones para las mujeres y los hombres en cualquier lugar del mundo. Pero nos toca esta, esta región del mundo que, que tiene su historia como región, tiene su historia dolorosa y terrible y también tiene una historia de desarrollo muy importante y desde luego esta universidad es, yo diría que, uno de los espacios magníficos que han surgido en esta región. Y agradecer muchísimo a Charlie, que vino a México, que promovió, promovió el, la cátedra también en reuniones que tuvimos con autoridades de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Y la verdad que fue formidable sentir que Charlie, un profesor de otra, de la otra universidad, proponía también esta cátedra a la gente de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, que es donde yo todavía, de vez en cuando, doy <coughs> clases. Eh, me jubilé, me jubilé a los 36 años de dar clases. Eh, entre otras cosas porque ya no, no tengo tiempo para dirigir tesis de mis estudiantes porque la verdad que ser asesora, tutora de estudiantes para mí siempre ha implicado involucrarme muy personalmente con ellas y ellos seguirlos en sus estudios, saber qué leen, qué no leen qué fueron a ver al cine ir con ellas y ellos a ver exposiciones, a hacer excursiones para descubrir maravillas de este mundo. O sea, y ya no tengo tiempo para hacer eso. Eh, ya la mayoría de mis estudiantes están graduados. Me quedan tres, me quedan tres que no salen y no salen, pero hay muy decir para que ya salgan. Eh, porque son personas también formidables que tienen trabajos muy importantes. Y bueno, lo que yo quiero, y para eso también servirá la cátedra, pues es escribir, ¿no? A mí me encanta escribir, 
y la escritura ha sido un espacio en el que también se dirimen los derechos humanos de las personas. Y yo pues quiero escribir más, más contribuir desde lo que yo sé como antropóloga. Soy antropóloga, eh, fui formada eh, en la vieja guardia, eh, se estaba terminando el indigenismo mexicano ligado a la antropología y yo fui parte de esas generaciones que hicimos la crítica a la antropología oficial mexicana ¿Mm? y pues hasta nos llamaron los antropólogos comprometidos lo, éramos los antropólogos del cambio y bueno soy orgullosamente eh, una antropóloga de la, de la Escuela Nacional de Antropología e Historia en el 68. Yo ingresé uh, a esa Escuela Nacional en 68. Entonces soy un producto cultural del 68 totalmente. De ahí vengo, ahí participé eh, políticamente en ese movimiento además de ser profundamente eh, democrático, porque luchábamos por las libertades democráticas, eh, y desde luego fue reprimido. Pero en ese, en ese proceso, muchas mujeres eh, participamos, cantidad de mujeres. Si ustedes ven las películas de la época, que ya son viejas, ¿no? eh, que son históricas, Verán a muchísimas mujeres participando. Ya éramos el producto de cambios de género en la sociedad mexicana que permitieron el avance incluso en estudios de licenciatura, de posgrado a mujeres. Eh, tal vez somos las primeras generaciones de mujeres universitarias que obtuvimos un grado y luego otro y luego otro. O sea, también somos hijas del petróleo en un país petrolero eh, que tuvo recursos financieros para financiar algo maravilloso, que fue la educación pública, laica, científica y de gran calidad. Yo me siento muy orgullosa de mis maestras y maestros, grandes antropólogos en México, eh, y de la calidad de lo que de lo que era la educación en ese país. Bueno, les podría hacer una conferencia sobre eso, pero no era el tema. Simplemente que, como eh, Charlie dijo, las rutas que, que seguimos para llegar aquí, pues yo también quería un poco contarles de dónde vengo y, y quién soy, además de lo que Gloria nos hizo favor de leer. Decir que siempre que, que me presentan, Dicen que yo formé parte del Partido Comunista Mexicano. Y es verdad. Aunque no lo crean, es verdad. Pero también, como sucedió con la antropología, que hicimos la crítica de la antropología, esa generación mía, pues fuimos muy revolucionarios. ¿no? Entonces también hicimos la crítica de los partidos políticos de la izquierda que había en ese entonces en México. Uno de ellos era el Partido Comunista, era el partido, pero era un partido proscrito, prohibido. Mi país era bastante gris en la política. Había presos políticos muy importantes de movimientos sociales eh, que se habían dado de maestros, de ferrocarrileros, de trabajadores diversos. Y en mi generación, que éramos los jóvenes, pues hicimos la crítica de esas ideas, bueno, que ahora hasta pueden dar risa, ¿no? Pero en aquellos ayeres eran ejes de la política. Una era en el Partido Comunista, eh, que estaba organizado desde una perspectiva que se llamaba centralismo, creo que democrático. No tenía nada de democrático y tenía todo de centralismo. O sea, una cosa horrible. Uno. Dos. Buscaba construir una sociedad en la que hubiese en el Estado 
una dictadura del proletariado. Imagínense esta persona, que, que yo lo llegué a decir algún día sin entender qué estaba diciendo.